So technically there's three types, a motor, a sensory, and then also mixed. Let's talk about motor and sensory because those are the two most commonly ordered, the things you'll probably, probably look at. And if you're, unless you're a neurologist that specifically interprets these, you may not find a mixed study the most useful. This is really just to support your already, already pretty much confirmed clinical diagnosis because most nerve compression syndromes are clinical diagnoses and you get an electric diagnostic study to support it if you're in doubt. So let's start off with the motor. In this case, this is a median nerve study. What is S2? What's S1? S2 is the proximal nerve stimulation site. So what happens here is you take the patient's arm and you'll st shock them here with an electrical impulse at S2 and you also shock them in electrical impulse at a different time at S1. S2 is the proximal stimulation site. S1 is the distal stimulation site. There's a recording electrode that records the depolarization of whatever muscle you're looking at because it's a motor neuron, right? It's a motor nerve conduction study. So in this case, this is a median nerve study. We're looking at the abductor pollicis brevis muscle. There's an electrode sitting on top of the skin overlying this muscle. So what is this fancy wave here that you get when you actually do this stimulation? So your stimulus here, let's say at, at S1, which is the distal site, you shock the person here and then you record over the muscle with a recording electrode. So here's your shock, which is the stimulus. What is distal latency? Well, from the time that you give them that shock to the initial deflection at the recording electrode from the muscle depolarization, that is distal latency. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's in milliseconds. It's giving us the time from when we shock them to we see activity in the muscle that we're trying to depolarize because it is a motor nerve conduction study. So that time in milliseconds tells us how well that motor neuron and its axons are conducting our impulse because the purpose of a nerve is to propagate in the electrical depolarization and then get to the motor end plate at the neuromuscular junction and then depolarize the muscle, right? So distal latency is the time from the stimulus to the initial deflection of the recording electrode. Now what is amplitude? Amplitude, it directly reflects how many axons are participating in that depolarization. It's kind of a summation of electrical depolarizations. The more axons that are intact, the higher the amplitude. And the duration is the duration of that electrical impulse being propagated. The duration will be prolonged or longer, so this will be much larger if there are axons that are injured because they depolarize at a slower rate or velocity. The things that influence conduction velocity are the diameter of the nerve, bigger nerves, faster depolarizations, how much myelin there is, and then also temperature. So Basically, motor nerve and sensory nerve conduction studies can only tell you information about big, large, myelinated nerves. And you have to make sure that the temperature is appropriate when you're doing these studies because that can affect your, your recording. So again, the proximal latency is the time from your stimulus to the recording electrode initial deflection, and then the same thing for distal latency, which is most commonly reported in the nerve conduction study reports. They give you information on how much uh, myelin, if there's any demyelination going on, or also if there's any potential nerve injury, and that's another uh, video that I'll make later. So now let's talk about sensory studies. Sensory studies is the same concept, except that we only need to stimulate at one site. Now why do we only stimulate at one site in a sensory study versus two stimulation points in a motor? Well this is because in the motor we have to think about not only is the, act, the, mo the motor neuron part of the study, but also the neuromuscular junction and then the muscle depolarization itself. That's why there's a calculation involved to get the conduction velocity in a motor study. You have to take the proximal latency, subtract the distal latency, just to give you the ability to test the velocity of conduction just within this nerve segment. It takes out the factor here. There's no muscle depolarization and neuromuscular junction involved in, in that calculation, right? because you're subtracting these two eliminates that factor. And when you divide this number, take the distance and divide by that number, that gives you a velocity, right? Meters divided by seconds. So conduction velocity is the way that's reported. In a sensory study, we're not looking at a muscle. We're just looking at a distal sensory nerve, right? So in this case, in the, in the median nerve, when you're looking at, for example, carpal tunnel syndrome, when there's compression underneath the transverse carpal ligament, you stimulate proximal to that, and you record uh, 
over the digital sensory nerve in the index, which is purely median nerve innervated. So you stimulate here, you shock them again, and then you have a recording electrode on the index finger. So from the, the time of your stimulus, which is here, to the initial def negative deflection here, that is your onset latency, which is the same concept as disk latency, except that you don't have a proximal and distal site, so they just call it onset latency. This also represents how well that nerve is able to conduct whatever pro uh, impulse is, prop is supposed to be propagating because you're shocking this person. And the same concept with amplitude. Amplitude represents how many intact axons are participating in your study after you shock the person. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful as far as nerve conduction studies.